Hello everyone and welcome to the online meeting with SWPS University. Today we'll answer questions related to the admissions process and our programs of study in English language. Of course our time is limited, therefore don't worry if you won't cover all the topics that you're interested in. This is the second one of the six webinars that we have planned for you, so we have five more meetings to tell you in detail about our offer and the admissions process. Uh, before we start, I have to point out that this webinar is funded by the Polish National Agency for Academics Exchange under the Welcome to Poland project uh, program, which is called SWPS University Ambassadors. My name is Adriana Zalewska and I'm admissions officers, uh, officer. However, after working hours, I'm also a student of SWPS University. And I'm here, of course, with some special guests. First, I would like to introduce uh, Agnieszka jakobson cielecka who is a Dean of the Faculty of Design in Warsaw and co-author of the Social uh, School of Form uh, program. Hello, Agnieszka. Hello. Next, we have Martin Schwedt, lecturer, sworn translator of English uh, and coordinator for English studies programs. Hello, good. Martin. Hi, good afternoon. There's also with us Ibrahim, uh, a graduate of SWPS University. He studied psychology program here. Hi, Ibrahim. Mm -hmm. um, I will be today talking about SWPS University, of course, uh, with our guests. But in the, in the meantime, uh, feel free to ask any questions in the chat box where Dorota, my colleague, is at your disposal. I'm pretty positive that um, we'll cover most topics he here with my guests, uh, and uh, but feel free to ask her anything. Uh, she will be definitely very helpful. Uh, there's also one more thing uh, that I have to point out before we start. Uh, the fact that the admissions for this academic year, 2022-2023, opened in January, so you can apply for your dream studies anytime now. Uh, so, enough of me talking. I think that we can now move on to the uh, topic of today's webinar, to our webinar. So, let's talk for a moment about what you can expect from SWPS University this year. Uh, we offer preparatory uh, language courses of Polish and English language, uh, bachelor studies and master studies. You can study either in Polish or English language. Um, so I strongly encourage you to visit our website as we have a few different programs. Uh, you can find their specific details about programs that we offer, the application process, fees and scholarships. Uh, you might be interested in those. As during today's meetings, we'll concentrate mostly on our offer, offer of uh, studies in English. Uh, so my first question uh, to my guests, um, I would like to ask me first Agnieszka jakobsen cielecka how does working with students from all those different countries, different cultures, uh, looks like? Is it different from working with Polish students? Uh, I would like to ask about your opinion and experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I may say that the, from the design studies perspective, you, you cannot find better circumstances than, than such a international and multicultural and diverse uh, group of students, because it's, it's just an important part of, of, of design expertise is to understand the needs, understand the differences. To, to to follow the, you know, it's it's a lot about understanding and a, a lot of about following needs. So if you have a group of students who are coming from really different contexts, different cultures, nothing becomes obvious. And, you know, and as a pointing start for, for design studies, that's that's the really crucial thing. So, so somehow it's easier with Polish students whom we have to force to, to, to get out of so-called box. And international students get it just at the first sight and at the first moment of being at, at school. And, and, you know, and the second thing is that, that it really, you know, it's, it's blossoming by, 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 by many long lasting connections between students. And, and that's, that's another value because again, the design world is, a, is small and very international. So having classmates uh, here and there in different ends of, of, of the world is, is also the opportunity. And uh, so that's, you know, I think it's, it's really the best you can imagine. 
Yeah, in my opinion, that's also very beneficial. And the fact that you can get closer to the culture that is like thousands of kilometers away from you, uh, it's also very, very interesting that, you know, you can get the culture um, much better. Uh, Martin, the question, the same question is to you. Do you have similar experience? What's your opinion about uh, studying and you know working with international students? Well, to be honest, it's hard to put it more accurately than Agnieszka just did before me. And uh, all I can say is that working with international students is, is truly an amazing experience. Because here in SWPS University, we uh, celebrate uh, cultural diversity, but uh, but we also know how to benefit from it, all of us, um, because from the educational point of view, having international students in the classroom, it's great because it simply broadens the perspective of any issues that are discussed in, cl in the classroom um, with the various insights and various different experiences. So this really makes any class discussion, any workshops or exercises so much more meaningful to have this um, broad perspective from many uh, different points. We normally say that education is the greatest eye-opener you'll experience in your lifetime, but you can only really start uh, realizing this when, when you're faced with true diversity and when people from different cultures come together. So this is really important. But on the, one, on the other hand, it's also important from a social point of view because it gives students the chance to uh, socialize with peers from different backgrounds and learn about the cultures and experiences. And on top of that, uh, also master the language skills through communication that can uh, only take place in such a multicultural environment. So there's there's many benefits to it, really, and uh, I think everybody here enjoys that. Last thing I'd like to say is that, uh, because I'm responsible for English studies, um, some of our programs and specializations have really been inspired by the popularity we've been getting from international students. So uh, they're not just adapted to catering for the needs of international students, but they have multiculturalism in their DNA. Yeah, definitely English, uh, the programs conducted in English are not only classes and tasks that students have to f fulfill, but also the, the big part is the, the people and what you benefit from studying in the international uh, environment. Ibrahim, you, from the student's perspective, of course, uh, you've graduated uh, a few years back, but could you please recall, how do you remember studying in such diverse group of people and how do you find yourself? Because currently you're studying your master's in Belgium, so uh, you still have the experience of studying in the international environment. Um, what's more, I would like to ask you, how do you feel about communication and did you have any troubles with communication with international students and were there any barriers? How was your experience? I understand. Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, from a perspective of student, uh, I would say, uh, to be honest, before I came in here uh, to Poland, I believe that international students, we as international students, uh, would be the minority group in comparison to local students, uh, Polish students. But as it turns out, actually, we were very uh, diverse group. Uh, I believe I had the chance to be friend uh, with people from all over the world each continent, I would uh, confidently would say. And initially about this question, uh, trouble with communication, uh, I'm not going to lie that I'd say that initially most of us stuttered, stuttered uh, during speaking, uh, during the first interactions, but it wasn't because of our uh, English capacity, rather it was because of our initial anxiety of getting to know the people. For example, when I came to Poland, it was my first time abroad, uh, except from uh, from Turkey, yeah, and it was, I was, to be honest, a little anxious, uh, but gradually uh, me and everyone else uh, got used to each other, and I would say that we had great time uh, during group discussions and projects. You mentioned very important uh, thing, uh, the language, uh, English, level, English of level of uh, English, uh, which we verify here in the admissions office. So um, there's no possibility that we, we admit someone who does not speak English. So you shouldn't, our future students shouldn't worry about communication. As Ibrahim said, it's most, uh, mostly the, the first, the excitement, the anxiety of getting to know new people uh, that maybe uh, makes you a little stuttered, but the English level shouldn't be a problem. 
Okay, I think that now we can move to the programs that we offer. We won't cover all of them, but since we have experts uh, from a School of Foreign and English Studies and graduate from psychology, we'll cover, of course, those programs. So um, let's start with English studies. Uh, Martin, could you please tell in a few sentences, characterize the field of English studies and what our future students can expect from it? Right. So quite obviously, I have to say that within the framework of uh, the English studies program, we first of all um, teach students about the English language and culture and also about the history, literature and arts of the English speaking countries, because these are the basics that everybody has to come to terms with. And this is also a fascinating area where many of our students choose to major later on. But then we move on to the practical applications of the knowledge which is gained throughout the studies in modern professional settings, so basically on the job market. So you could say that our program covers up-to-date knowledge and skills that are required on the modern marketplace. And also, from the other perspective, it teaches young people to apply this knowledge and those skills um, to develop a successful career. Um, for the purpose of achieving that goal, we make sure that our classes are run by professors, by experienced academics, researchers, but also to a really high extent by um, successful practitioners. So on the one hand, we offer a comprehensive, you might say, program in philology with everything that it should contain in any other university. But on the other hand, we also listen to the voices of employers, we look at what's happening on the marketplace, and then that way, we try to teach students the competencies that are currently in demand on the market. So in a way, we combine humanities with technology and with business in order to give our graduates a competitive advantage as soon as they leave the university. Um, and just one more thing, uh, we obviously also operate a graduate program, so MA or master studies, which um, are on the one hand an extension of what happens during the BA program but also they are more in depth and slightly more provide a slightly more academic perspective of the issues that are discussed. So, uh, well, don't get me wrong, they are still very applicable, but um, to in a lot of ways, they also uh, uh, target the people who are interested in a very broad and comprehensive type of education in English studies. Um, they also cater for people who might be interested in an academic or research career. And as we know recently in the European Union, those kinds of careers are beginning to be really exciting and attractive with all the grants and funding and research travel and uh, all the benefits that are attached. And the last thing I'd like to say is that we also teach additional languages, not just English. We have programs um, in English with Chinese, Japanese, Korean, German and Spanish at the moment. So this is a really exciting opportunity, I think. Um, thank you very much. And the same question goes to Agnieszka, but this time please characterize School of Form as at first it might sound a little, sound a little mysterious, but this is a very interesting and intriguing part of, of SWPC University. Uh, yes, so it's uh, School of Form, it's a brand for, for design program as, at SWPS University and it's the program which um, we, we run this program for the last 10 years, last two years we are in Warsaw and it's, it's quite innovative concept uh, combining design education with humanities. So with, with the approach to, to to learn to teach students not only to 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 make things beautiful and useful, but also to again to to answer the needs and to understand the needs and to uh, to understand the world. So like to be a bit far ahead the changes to come. Um, so that's the, the the main interesting part, uh, the, the the main important part. But also there is the very practical program. So so we have a lot of. Uh, really well equipped workshops like we have carpenting and um and locksmith workshop ceramics screen printing robotics uh, 3d printing and and digital um film and photo studio and um and you know and in all those studios um all those workshops student 
not uh, they they work them themselves. So it's it's really hands on and very practical program. And uh, students coming. So the 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 thing I should say at the beginning it's the four years bachelor's program, and on the first year the program is the same for all students. And after the first years, at the at at the end of the first year, students um, can choose between one of two specializations. The one is communication design, and the other is product design, um, which to make the long story short, is choice between 2D and 3D designing. Uh, however, of course, it's much more complex and, um, and, um, and complicated. And then, um, and then during the whole course of studies, there are three kinds of classes. So there are classes where you do projects and those classes are led by two teachers. So there is design teacher and humanities teacher having the part of, the, of, of teaching hours together. So students can witness the dialogue between the, between the humanities like social social sciences or um, or visual anthropology or psychology and this design practical thing. So it sometimes it's you know sometimes it's 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 really um, opposite and the role of the designer is is to find a way to to uh, to negotiate it. Then there are classes which we call tools and that's the very practical thing. So students just learn how to design a poster, how to design a publication, how to cast the porcelain mug or por porcelain vessel, how to sew, how to... It was one workshop I missed, it's the sewing workshop as well. And, um, and the third kind of, of classes we are offering is... Um, we offer is, um, is the context. So this is like this all theoretical background of the humanities tools, like the research tools, the writing classes, the um, um, what more, and and also the lectures about about the the problems of contemporary world in the design context. So what does it mean for designers? What designers can do for 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 this uh, for these uh, things, and. Uh, the graduation project takes one year, and again, it's supervised by by two, by designer and um, and tutor from um, field of humanities and social sciences. I probably missed something, but uh, but I think it was quite long anyway. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to talk about School of Form. As I said, it's a pretty special part of, uh, of our university. But I think that you, you've mentioned most of the important uh, factors. Um, as I mentioned before in the beginning of the webinar, uh, these are not the only fields of study in our offer, apart from English studies and School of Form design. Uh, we offer, of course, psychology and management program. Uh, as for psychology and management program, we'll talk about them in detail next time. Uh, but Ibrahim, since you're a graduate of psychology program, maybe you could say a few words about your classes, how it looked like, and what do you remember from it? I understand. So, um, first of all, uh, I'm admit that our psychology program was not that conventional type of classes. Um, what do I mean by the conventional uh, classes? In those classes, uh, they feed you, maybe overfeed you with theoretical information. And then in the examination session, you get pen and paper exams. But nope, uh, this was not actually the case for SWPS, uh, that our program was rather very interactive with a lot of seminars, workshops, and presentations, and especially presentations because I remember them very specifically. They definitely increased my confidence and public speaking skills, I would say. And generally, uh, when you think of it in an organizational perspective, that our courses are generally divided into lectures and seminars, uh, where you learn the content, the theoretical knowledge in, the, in our lectures, and then you apply these uh, theory in, into the, some form of practice in seminars in a uh, very engaging way, I would say. 
And maybe I'm talking too much, but a, there's another information that I remember uh, that our our, prefer, a, our professors in, in our university a, were very reachable. Then they usually reply to my emails within the day or the next day, and they would actually they would be very great in the in their office hours. Uh, you could be you could easily get uh, a rendezvous uh, appointment from our professors and talk your uh, problems sorted out. Yeah, it was really nice, I'd say. As I mentioned, I'm also a student of SWPS University, and I also study psychology, but in Polish. Uh, of course, those programs do not differ from each other. Uh, they are similar apart from the, the language of instruction. Uh, however, I have to strongly uh, strongly agree with you, Ibrahim, that the, the, the psychology program is a very practical program. We had lots of seminars, lots of presentations, lots of workshops, uh, which I think is very beneficial, especially for the psychology program when you then work with people to be able to interact and work with, with each other. So for me, that was very beneficial for during my studies. Um, okay, so we talked about programs. Now let's talk what we can do after we finish your, our studies. Uh, what are career prospects for our future students? Let's start with English studies. Uh, Martin, who are English studies graduates and what kind of career prospects do they have after uh, graduating? Well, on the one hand, we're really lucky because English is the language of the world. But on the other hand, we have to be a bit more specific than that because the world is becoming really competitive. So here in SWP, WPS University, we try to teach people to take advantage of that. But on the other hand, through our cho choice of specializations, which are obligatory, beginning with the second year of BA studies and um, as early as the first year of MA studies, we offer people programs which are dedicated to specific professions. And this might be, uh, on the one hand, English teachers working both in the public school sector, which is becoming more and more advanced, and in private language schools, which are extremely popular on the market right now, and also for translators and interpreters, where we teach them to use the latest, most modern cutting edge technologies and artificial intelligence. But also we have programs for people who want to take advantage of their English skills and, and knowledge in a little more, let's say, open and creative way such as the specialization which is called English for Business Environment, where you know, students learn to basically um, freely function in the modern corporate and, uh, and business setting. And they learn about economics, they learn about management, human resources, um, finance, marketing and advertising. And they have a really good chance of landing a very good job in a multinational corporation because they'll be equipped with the skills to, be, to, to make them able to do the job. Also, we have cultural and lit literary studies as a specialization, and this is where students gain the skills that are actually required from people like writers, editors, but also filmmakers and game developers. So, in short, we have something for anyone who's interested in languages and for anyone who wants to do what they love, also professionally. Definitely. Uh, I didn't even know that there are, uh, there's uh, such diversity and so many opportunities, so thank you for that. Um, the same question goes to Agnieszka Jakobsen-Tielecka. How about School of Form Design? Um, I'm positive that there are lots of career prospects, but Please, uh, please tell what our future uh, graduates can do after a design program. So, you know, so my, my favorite answer for this question is they, they, they do whatever they like. But, uh, but to, be more, uh, to be more precise, it's, you know, some of them, they just because we are the, the BA level, so they, they continue studies. And um, I may proudly say that that they they are able to study at the best um, best design schools and universities in the world, like uh, I don't know, Design Academy in Eindhoven or RCI in RCA Royal College of Art in London, or or you know, what, really wherever they they aim, they 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 reach there, they reach it. Uh, the others start with their own individual practices and and they also because of this this practical teaching 
which you know the our idea is that uh, before you will became the the famous designer you have to earn some money so if you have if you have skills you can do things so and some of them literally just do it they start small ceramic businesses or small sewing businesses or um, and the others they 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 have like Mm, bias to to go to more to 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 big businesses so to, they join the design uh design teams in um in 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 design companies and 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 design studios so so really every every way is possible and um and also the it's the thing about program and the last year of studies is has a special model about how to to support them to understand which design way they want to they want to choose so to define to support them in defining all, all own goals and own needs or dreams or possibilities so that's that's also sound sound in the program um well, talking about career prospects, uh, I have to ask you, Ibrahim, about your experience because we get a lot of questions about um, work possibilities during studies. Uh, I have to right away say that we have lots of students that work and study. They easily combine those things. But I want to know how was it with you and how was the um, uh, career prospects after you, you graduated and your experience? I understand. Um, well, I would like to reply to this question with a, a very typical answer from psychology. Uh, it is, it depends. Uh, let me explain it in details, yeah? Um, for example, I'm from Turkey. And for psychology students from Turkey, it is very common to continue with clinical psychology masters for their career prospects and also SWPS uh, offered this programs, uh, program and most of my friends continued with this in here and they're pretty happy about it, I'd say. Uh, but for example, if they want to stick with academia and uh, they would like to become a researcher, uh, first I would like, I need to say this, that we have a great neuroscience laboratory called Games Lab. Uh, I, I worked there as a student uh, research assistant, assistant for three years. And also for the masters, uh, if they still want to stick with the academia, uh, we also in SWPS have this applied social psychology uh, program, and it's also an option. And they have very informative and uh, guiding courses in under this program, I would say. And but if the question is about working and studying simultaneously, it may require a at least personally personally it was for me that it may require some personal effort to find it out um luckily uh, many global companies hire english speaking uh, people under them in poland in warsaw um but yet uh, i must remark this that i would definitely suggest uh, these international students to learn at least try to learn some polish language um, yes, you may think that uh, you will be temporary in this country, but learning the local language would be a great asset in your integration within Poland, yeah? Uh, that's true, Ibrahim. We Poles like uh, when foreigners do speak English, uh, do speak Polish just a little bit. Um, so definitely like basic sentences and words, it's good to know. But uh, of course, you don't have to speak Polish to study here, work here and live here. Uh, there's no, the Polish language is not obligatory. Um, okay, so as we, we talked about programs and career prospects, of course, we have to talk a little bit about current situation, which uh, is definitely changing. changing. Uh, for the past uh, all, almost over two years, sorry, over two years, we've been living in a completely different reality, which has been changing. Uh, we had better months, uh, there were some worse months. Um, and therefore, the, the mode of studying has changed at every university. And I want to talk uh, to ask my guests about online education at our university, how it looked like, uh, what are pros and cons of studying online and how it looks like right now, because the, the current situation in Poland is getting better. Um, so maybe we'll start with Agnieszka Jakobsen-Cielecka. 
um, what are the pros and cons of studying online and how it looks looks like currently and how it looks like uh, in design program because as I mentioned, it is a different part of the, the university and it has different rules. Um, so I would say that, of course, the, this, this uh, COVID pandemic influenced the, everybody, but probably design studies less than the others because we... Um, I, I can't imagine to, to, to teach anybody like how to work with wood or how, how to work with porcelain or, or, or anything else um, in remotely. So, uh, so we analyzed the program and the things which were possible to be moved online, we moved online, but it was mostly the lectures and, and some, some theoretical studies. And the rest was the huge effort of combining not to have too many people in building not to with the constant problems of switching off and switching on the groups because somebody get infected uh, in fact the all those two years we were present in the building and um, and sometimes i felt like you know the old building was dark and the uh, and the only the the the, the our part was um, um, lightning because of, of all workshops were uh, were on, but I think we we learn a lot from this uh, from this uh, this remote education in terms of organizing ourselves in terms of preparing the the educational educational materials. So so I think we the one I think we experienced this it less than the others. But but anyway, we 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 gain a lot. And and saying something personal, you know, I for me in in especially for for organizing and for follow up, it's it was really um, really useful. And I, I I have a feeling that students also also appreciate it. And it's this this remote work. It's it's also. The way with pandemic or without pandemic, it's the way the world is is um, is driving through. So I think also for students, it's uh, it was also the way of preparing to 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 the professional experience because now we we are just sure and and we learn that that you know we don't have to be all in the same place to to do things together and and we do international projects. And even international cooperations with with the partnering universities, uh, running courses located here and there, and just um, and just having the um, the remote meeting time time to time, and and the results are really they are different, but they are really good. So um, yeah, so. You know, it was again. It was you know, or or the problem, or or the opportunity. So we we treat it as opportunity. Well, definitely, the design program wasn't affected as much as other programs because, as you've mentioned, uh, it is impossible to work with wood remotely uh, in the online mode. This is impossible. So. Uh, as you said, uh, the school of form uh, part of our school, uh, of our university, um, was open. There were students. Uh, it was full of life. Um, it definitely uh, improved also from the situation, but you didn't experience it as much as, for example, English studies. Uh, so the same question goes to Martin Schwedt. Um, how it looks like for you as a lecturer to uh, switch to online mode, uh, to remote mode. Um, yep, please tell me about your experience. Right, so um, about two and a half years ago when COVID hit, we were all really worried that this could seriously damage um, education in the Department of English, but also in other departments of the university that were well, significantly more affected by it. And we were all worried that this could seriously make students drift away from universities. But because we were able to embrace the new technologies, the methods of working and learning online, we actually 
a bit strangely, but we were happy to see uh, a consistent increase in the number of admitted students. So to be clear, we're not just talking about effective online learning methods and how to implement them, even though we had to do that to a really significant extent. But really what happened was that we realized how the workplace started changing due to the pandemic and what new opportunities appeared as a result for our graduates, of course. So then we started taking advantage of that. So um, a very good example is um, my field of expertise. I'm a translator and interpreter, and I do a lot of what is called simultaneous interpretation, um, which means working in a very confined space uh, along with another person and interpreting during conferences and, uh, and multinational meetings. Now that clearly became completely impossible as, as, as soon as we, we you know, went into lockdown. Um, and in fact, it became dangerous for the entire industry. So what happened is simultaneous interpreting was sort of reborn online into something that we call the remote simultaneous interpretation, which is something that started uh, or emerged as a, as a profession that requires new skills, new technologies, new competencies. So what we did in the Department of English is we, we Im immediately learned how to do this. We acquired the competencies, we acquired the technologies, and we started teaching our, our students simultaneous interpreting online. That's one of the examples. But just to answer your question, we will definitely and surely be returning to on-site learning in, in the university building uh, to the fullest extent possible, because everybody wants that, and the students want that, the lecturers want that. Um, but at the same time, and that's already started, we already teach some of the classes on the campus, but at the same time, we'll, be, we'll still be taking advantage of the new methods and new technologies that we learned uh, to use in the, in, in the last two and a half years, and because this is really something that benefits our students, and it, it gives them additional skills and additional competency. So, you know, it's important to realize that while the pandemic has definitely had a very destructive effect on, on the economy and the society, but it's also led to the emergence of to, to the creation of new professions and new specializations. Um, and some of them will definitely stay with us uh, long after COVID is gone. So we just want our students to be ready for that and we want them to be able to, to benefit from that. Yes, I also remember when the pandemic hit that we were very um, afraid how it will look like. Is it possible to study online? Um, what's going to happen now? But as it turned out, we didn't really have a problem to switch to the online mode in two weeks. And we've managed to prolong this online education till now. Uh, as you mentioned, Martin, of course, uh, if possible, we'll get back to the university and we will resign from the online education because we want to, to see you, see students, see each other and uh, be able to experience this uh, university um, journey with each other. Um, currently, we are mostly having a hybrid mode. So mostly lectures are online and other workshops, classes, seminars uh, are here at the university. It, of course, depends on the program, uh, on the studies and on the year that you are studying. Uh, but, of course, um, as for the October intake, uh, we have still a few months left, still that time. So the pandemic situation may change, you know, three times by then. Uh, so we cannot say um, that we'll have online education or maybe we'll have hybrid mode or we'll study at the university. It's too early to say. Uh, keep in mind that the class format uh, is a subject to changing uh, pandemic circumstances, circumstances and of course government regulations so we have to work according to 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 what the government says uh, for now we have the hybrid mode a school of form of course works uh, its own way mostly at the university um, but yes we will see what will happen in october we'll definitely have more information in september um, yes, the webinar is coming to an end. I don't have any more questions to my to my guests. So this is the last uh, call to to write any questions that you have uh, in the chat box. 
Uh, in the meantime, I want to strongly encourage you to sign for another webinar that we'll have uh, on the 12th of April. We'll talk about um, a short guide to studying in Poland, the cultural background, what you can expect once coming to Poland. Um, so, of course, I strongly encourage you to sign for another webinar. Um, and that will be all for today. I would like to thank uh, so much for participating in the online meeting with me and my guests. Uh, today, I had pleasure to talk to uh, Agnieszka uh, jakobson tielecka who is Dean of Faculty of Design in Warsaw and co-author of the School of Form program. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Uh, there was also with us Martin Schwedt, uh, a lecturer, sworn translator of uh, English, coordinator for English uh, Studies program. Thank you so much. Thank you, it was great. There was also with us Ibrahim, a graduate of SWBS University of Psychology program, who uh, came from Belgium here to Poland to have the webinar here in Poland with us. So thank you so much for, for coming here today, uh, thank Ibrahim. You. Thank you, it was my pleasure. Uh, the last thing I want to say uh, is that I advise you to apply as soon as possible. Don't wait for the very last moment to apply because there might not be any seats left. Uh, admissions are open until the end of September or until we reach a limit of places. Some programs such as psychology program are very popular at our university and uh, all seats are usually reserved by the end of June, July. So don't wait for the very last minutes. Uh, please remember, of course, that you can always contact us via phone, email, or you can book an online meeting with uh, us or maybe with Ibrahim, our graduate, who can also guide you through the admissions process and tell you more about his experience. Um, we'll be more than happy to guide you through, through this process. So thank you once again and hopefully see you at the university. <laughs>